All right, so now it's time to put the head gasket back on this thing. All right, so you can see I have all my parts laid out here. I have a new head gasket here. This is a Sten's head gasket. It's aftermarket, but it'll get the job done. Then we have anti-seize over here, my torque wrench, inch pounds torque wrench set to the uh, proper value. Then we have my head over here with all the bolts in it, how they came out in the same order. And then I have everything cleaned up, polished up, you know, degreased, um, ready to go. So let's just jump right into it. Um, I'm going to put links in the description to the service manual that I use to do this, and it covers a whole bunch of Briggs and Stratton's. Um, it'll cover this one, you know, if you're working on a go-kart, it'll cover a lot, a lot of Briggs and Stratton models. So it might cover all of them. I don't want to say, but y'all check out the link in the description because um, you're going to have to use that to do this. Don't try to do it without it. So it's got the bolt pattern in there and the... Um, torque spec. The torque spec for this motor is 165 inch pounds, not foot pounds, 165 inch pounds. So that's what the torque wrench is set to. So let's just pop this thing on there. I mean, it's not like a car or a boat or something like that where it's more complicated. And this head gasket's a little bit rusty. Not too happy about that, but I don't know why. Um, whatever. I got it, so I'm going to use it, and we're going to get the job done. Alright, so we're just going to pop this thing on here. Now, um, I already chased all these threads. I ran a bolt in here and blew them out and flushed them out, you know, got all the uh, gunk out of here. Um, I had to run a tap in this one because I didn't have a re-threader thing, like, you know... Um, a thread fixer thing so I had to run a tap in here it didn't take off any metal really but it was so messed up and corroded up I had to run it through there but um you know I don't really like doing that because I don't want it to be loose and take metal off and you know not seal good so it goes without saying make sure this thing is spotless you know clean enough to eat off before you do this but we're just gonna pop it on here now they say don't put anything on here just put it on here dry and maybe a light coat of oil or something, um, you know, would be a good idea. All right, now if you're working on an older motor, obviously your head's probably going to be warped. Um, there's no getting around it, but you can see this head gasket is um, is pretty thick. I mean, you know, it's a sixteenth of an inch thick, so it's hopefully going to make up for that. But it only goes on here one way. You can see pretty clear. It goes on here one way. And we're just going to drop it on there, drop the head on there, and bolt this thing back together. Make sure the underside of this is all spotless too. Um, make sure there's no, you know, crud up in there. Sand, grit. You know, I've already polished the heck out of it. I've already cleaned everything up, blew everything out, brake cleaned everything. You know, acetone stuff. Um... This is good to go, so. Alright, so this is going to create a little bit of controversy here. I'm sure it will, but um, I'm putting anti-seize on these bolts. I don't care what y'all say. You know, do what you want. But um, I'm putting aluminum anti-seize on here because this one was stuck and it, it, it broke. So here's the remnant of that. And you had to see what I had to do to get off there. I had to torch it and, you know, do all kinds of stuff to get it off there, destroy it. Um, you know, I don't care. I'm putting anti-seize on this whole entire motor when I put it back together because I don't like breaking bolts and I don't like wasting time. So do what you want, but that's what I'm going to do. Um... You know, we're just going to coat these bolts up here. You can see this one is a different color. This one is one I got out of a um, scrapyard. But you can see it's a different color and it's coated with that uh, color, with that uh, coating. I think it's some type of zinc coating like a um, grade 8 bolt is. And I'm sure they did that after the fact because they realized corrosion was an issue on these. Um, you know, it's a good idea, but uh, 
I'm not replacing all these bolts. So we're going to get these coated up. And you say, oh, you're globbing too much on. I don't care, dude. I really don't. Um, I'm going to get a good coating on it because, like I said, I'm not doing this again. You know, I don't want, I want them to come right out if I have to take this off. So let me get all these bolts coated up and uh, we'll check back here. All right, so I have all these bolts coated with anti-seize, and um, we're going to snug them up. So here, I went and printed this out for y'all. Here's the pattern right here, and you can see the different patterns for the different style heads. So the one we're going to be using is in the bottom left right there, and uh, you can see in relation to the spark plug hole, um, you know, which one's number one. So we're going to do... First of all, I'm just going to get them down, and then I'm going to snug them up in this pattern. And I'm probably going to torque them uh, half torque spec, and then go back and fully torque them all the way out. So let's get these down first, and then we'll snug them up in this order. Um, this would be number one, and then this would be number two. Um, one, two, you know, it doesn't really matter. This isn't even hand tight, really, but, um. Four. Don't try to do this without knowing that torque pattern right there. I just showed y'all. But, um, that service manual, like I said, I'll link to the PDF in the description because y'all are going to need to read that. Um. You want to make sure you do this right, obviously, because you spend all the time taking it apart. You want to put it back together right, so make sure you check that out. Alright, so I have all of these uh, bolts here, finger tight, or somewhat finger tight. And um, I have my torque wrench set to 82 inch pounds. So we're going to follow this pattern here, and I'm not going to hold it up and see it so that y'all can you know, see it the whole time, but we got one right here. Then we got two back here. Then we got three. We got four. We got five, six, so we're on six right now, six, seven, eight, Nine. All right, so now I'm going to adjust my torque wrench here, and we're going to go up to 165 inch pounds, and then I'm going to torque it all, and it's going to be done. So let me adjust this torque wrench real quick. All right, so we're back now at 165 inch pounds, and it's going to be hard to read, but you're going to have to trust me. It's 165 inch pounds, so now we're going to go back. One, two, three, four, five. I'm watching my pattern down here. Six. Seven, eight, nine. Done. It's done. So that's the head gasket replaced. Um, it's done. It's that easy.
And what do you know, now my motor has compression again. I'm dying to get a compression test on this thing. All right, so I'm gonna stop playing with this motor, but that's how you do it right there. And I was just watching this, um, you know, down in the bottom corner right there while I was doing it. So y'all are gonna need that um, service manual right there. It's a great service manual. It covers, you know, it has like this um, model. It doesn't tell right here. It has like, you know, series 17, whatever it is, 17,000, 19,000, like all that stuff. I'll link to it in the description so y'all can check it out down there. Um, as far as head gasket, you know, this thing's done. I have to put it all back together and stuff, but um, y'all are going to have to check that out in another video. Alright y'all, thanks for watching. If y'all enjoyed this video and it helped y'all out and helped you get your tiller, edger, go-kart, snowblower, um, log splitter, whatever you have a horizontal shaft Briggs and Stratton motor on, if this helps y'all get it back together, make sure you drop me a big thumbs up down below. And don't forget to check out the links in the description because I'll link y'all up to all the supplies in that document that I used in this video. And while you're down there, don't forget to comment and subscribe for more videos of me putting this tiller back together and me putting this whole motor back together. Later!